And we are back for episode 3.2 of Inroads Plays All Bards. So um, let's get in the scene, shall we? <laughs> so our uh, uh, the scene opens up on the river itself. Um, there is almost a dazzling amount of light and color and sound that's just emanating from the river Destin that uh, winds its way through the heart of Sapphire Harbor. And for those who may not remember, Sapphire Harbor is basically a canal city. Um, it's been um, it's been around for a, about a hundred, couple hundred years, and is the center of musical culture for the region um, that we just know colloquially as the realms, and uh, or the realm, whatever. I don't want any copyright infringement. So, <laughs> as uh, as the scene opens up, the river is. The opening, uh, the opening town. It's the it's the opening salvo. It's the uh, the the beginning chords of uh, the the festival of arias, which is an opportunity for local bands, musicians, and entertainers to bring in the uh, the music and entertainment of their representative cultures, and uh, and vie for supremacy in the city that entertains unending. And it is uh, an opportunity for folks to really enjoy music from all walks of life, uh, whether you're poor or you're rich, uh, whatever, if you got a front row seat on a riverboat or you have to scrounge your way through the wharf district to be able to actually hear music coming from the river, there's not really a bad seat in the house, uh, as it were. So it is, uh, it's interestingly uh, that we find our heroes standing on the end of a pier, um, the small, uh, small pier that connects to a single vessel. And that vessel, interestingly enough, is devoid of sound. There's some light coming from the windows. Um, it's, a, it's a river boat. It's got three levels. And each level has these uh, floor-to-ceiling windows um, that are currently are kind of um, fogged a bit to where you can't quite see inside. It's got, um, they've got something that's kind of preventing uh, being able to see inside the, the interior. But you can tell there's light coming from inside. Now, it's not altogether quiet. There is some sound. It's, uh, it's almost like the sound of somebody tuning an instrument or, or uh, maybe the echo of like some kind of inner workings from the boat. Um, that kind of travels out in uh, almost like a, uh, um, a monotone sound, like an old timey wimey radio from uh, for our our universe, and that's where we find our four heroes. We find a uh, a kinku uh, standing uh, standing there, and uh, uh, what what what's uh, what's Rigo doing right now? As uh, as you guys are standing at the pier and and looking onto the gangplank that leads to this boat. Rico is busy preening his feathers. It's got to look nice. It looked nice for what's happening. And uh, so, who's next to who's next to Rico? Maybe Scout is uh, is there, um, eyeballing the boat. What's uh, what's he doing? What's his what's his stance? He's uh, it's a really fancy boat, right? So yeah, he's, the, uh, the the workings into this boat are amazing. Yes. So he's uh, make sure there's nothing stuck in his beard. <laughs> There's no sewer slime on his guitar. <laughs> Looking good. All right, nice. Yep. Nice. All right. I'm assuming we took a little bit of time between our last location and this location. Sure. There'd be a yeah. little bit of time. You might have a couple of hours uh, to do that. Freshen up a bit. Yeah. Freshen yeah. up so, a little bit. So Varax is going to be wearing some very nice, um, very nice clothing. Spray some of that fantasy not, breeze on you. Not completely like overdone, but well, well tailored clothing, high quality. She's she's got her her good her her best studs on. Are they shiny? Are there shiny bits on it? Oh, I'm sure there are, and she's she's probably like glossed up her scales a little bit too. I love it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Rio just loves it. And yeah. so, and, and to the remind the audience, we have we've we've started with the kinku uh, preening their feathers. We have scoured the dwarf. Uh, Glam rock extraordinaire with a keytar ready to uh, pierce that air with some raging cosmic and get up <laughs> 80s sound. And then we have Raxa, the uh, Velociraptor. No, I mean the, uh, <laughs> the dragon. My performance born. in the dungeons or clever the girl. might might uh you know <laughs> yeah yeah. So uh, preened to a near shine, uh, mm -hmm. gleaming as it were um, to. Uh, to perhaps even shame her ancestors. 
She is of such presence. And last but not least, we have Angasynid, the, uh, the half elf. <laughs> the half elf who has a wonderful history of music. What's what's he doing? What's he what's he what's he looking like as he stands on the war, uh, the pier here? I look at everyone else looking all trying to be pretty, and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I let my music speak for itself. Well. <laughs> Nice. I love it. So, yeah. So you guys are, uh, you guys are standing, uh, standing on the other side of this gangplank. Uh, are you, there's, from outside, it doesn't look like there's anybody on this boat right now. Um, you do hear some of the inner workings of the boat that might indicate that the, the engine, the, the steam powered and, and elemental powered portions of this thing are, are working and are active. But, uh, but yeah, you're not, um, you're not seeing anybody on the outside. Is it moored up? Is there a gangplank over onto the uh, ship? Um, yeah, there is. There's a. It's it's got a. Um, it's actually still has the. Yeah, it still has the rope attached to the uh, uh, attached to the pier from the bow on the bow and on the stern. And yeah, the gangplank is still affixed pretty firmly to the side of the boat. Is there anybody at the gangplank? No. The pier is is deserted. Oddly enough, every other boat out here is out on the water, and a lot of attention is out on the uh, out on the river itself. And the place where you're at right now, this particular pier is not in an out of the way place. But for some reason, it just doesn't seem like as you made your way in this direction, it just felt like you didn't feel welcome. And maybe it might have kept lesser bands away, but not. Not peace treaty. Uh, well, say we go uh, ask for permission to board. And search across the gangplank. All right. So, scout leads the way. <laughs> Getty tree in the there. <laughs> nice. I love it. So, what's the uh, what's the, the 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 tuning fork? Vocal tuning fork. So, what are we what are we rolling here? I'm seeing rolls, and I'm <laughs> seeing was... that it's humorous. <laughs> but I want to well, know what. Uh, well, Scott I was, was just tuning his guitar, and then I just wanted to show off my instrument name. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of my excuse for. Well, how can I show? Oh, if I'm tuning it, then I can click the button, and they can see it's called the guitar of mythicality. Nice. It's kind of meta that I'm tuning a tuning fork because it's already tuned. <laughs> Don't. Oh, I didn't. The GM didn't even get it. I get. I get a despair point. That doesn't. Even, oh, it's okay. not even the right game. I guess, I, you could, I, I guess you could say it's Tuneception. Oh, wow. Tower roll? Tower roll? Wow. Wow. Oh, dear. If I'd have known ahead of time, I would have grabbed that sound bit from the from Rule 20. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I would, <laughs> there was a time where I, I should have heard that. I was driving, and you know you see vehicles in movies where the lights are shining and it's just blazing light shining into the darkness yeah mm -hmm. and you're like lights don't do that well there was just enough mist and fog that was doing that it was, it was a it was just a garbage truck but it looked like a jj abrams garbage truck it's <laughs> dump the trash in <laughs> and drive the mix <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm the jj abrams waste them? disposal company <laughs> yeah that's right lens flare for everybody <laughs> um so all right, so yeah, so Scout makes his way across the gangplank. Uh, who's who's brave enough to follow the, the dwarf? I'll go. I'll come with. All right. So uh, so the so the half elf and the kinku um, approach the gangplank at the same time. Who gives way? If they can't sort it out, I'm just going to pick them both up and move them out of the way. <laughs> so for Axel, like, moves them aside and, like, heads on to the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's parting the waters. <laughs> can't we all just get along? We can get I along just, fantastically just... if you all appreciate how amazing I am. <laughs> I, just, I, just I will part you two like the Red Sea oh, in my right. foot is Moses. All right, so <laughs> here we go. We are... Uh, boarding the ship so so yeah so you're still kind of hearing that kind of ghostly musical tuning 
um, machinery sound kind of echoing from the around the boat itself. Um, as you get closer, you notice again. There's, there's, again, this is three stories tall, and you have um, ways to get up. There are these spiral um, iron wrought uh, staircases that go upward on the four corners of the of the ship, and then also amidships on either side, starboard and port. Well, at least you're seeing the starboard side right now. And uh, I'm sorry, the port side, because it's going to reverse out of the pier if it ever gets underway. <laughs> so, yes. uh, unless you guys blow it up, I don't know. You might squish it. I'm not. I don't. I can't control these things. You guys are. You guys squish everything you see. Instead of mm-hmm. chunky salsa, what do we turn a boat into? Splinters. <laughs> Splinters. <laughs> I have. I have shatter. You know. Okay. Chunky so, splinters doesn't have the same ring to it as a no, chance, no, though. No, it no, it doesn't. It doesn't. So okay, so yeah. what do you guys do? That you were on the boat um, again. It's of massively intricate quality. Um, every single panel of the uh, of the ship seems to have a uh, you know some form of like design element, uh, flowing element to it that uh, uh, just indicates just masterwork level quality. Um, Varaxa feels very much at home. Oh yeah, yeah you, you. She feels you, like you, she's you amongst her. Sure, people. Most. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and I think short of Angusinid, who's Elvin, Elvin past is definitely uh, singing right now, at the uh, at the creation of his ancestors, but um, yeah. I'm gonna look for anything out of the ordinary. I've not been in a boat before, All except right. this one, but maybe give there's us. something that just doesn't seem right. Uh, give us a give us a roll there. Let me switch this over to the game board. All right, so investigation fourteen. Okay, so. Um, the sound that you're hearing, uh, this kind of like echoey music um, or tuning and that sort of thing, is coming from the um, uh, there's these little little cornucopia speakers all around the uh, the ship. Like you're seeing them kind of nestled up and built into the uh, the vessel's design pattern um, all around the place. Like up in the uh, the uh, up above you is the walkway that's above you on the second floor. Um, you see them kind of nestled into little corners and stuff, and it's just kind of echoing all around the ship right now. Are we on the screen, the old screen still, or are we on a boat screen? Um, we oh, well, you know what? I can uh, I can always just kind of put you onto the okay. Because uh, I, I was just making sure that I wasn't missing something because I was still no 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 no, no. I'll, just, I'll put you guys on the home screen for now. <laughs> okay, yeah, we, that's uh, fine. We go just in. Throw me off. Theater of the mind okay. for now. So we're uh, on a boat. So we're on yeah, a boat. So... everybody look at us because we're standing on a boat. On a boat. Okay. We're gonna need a bigger boat. We're gonna need a bigger one. <laughs> um, so, we recognize uh... the. <laughs> Is there any magicalness to this song? Um, I might have wax in my ears. So. <laughs> might have wax in my ears. So an arcana check. Um, I think you feel. A cold and clammy feeling kind of chill up and down your spine as you kind of attune yourself to the the, the sensations of the arcana around you. Um, I think Probably some sort of a ward or a glamour or something to try to keep people away. Mm, no, it feels colder and a more otherworldly. Like mm. deadly. Well, if there's some if there's something arcane. Yeah. So Alyssa. Tomorrow. So or I'm sorry, Rigo. So when you. Uh, you're kind of like, so what does it look like when you're tuning yourself to the arcana and trying to kind of sense things? You, 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 well, you definitely, you definitely get to see Rigo do the whole, you know, the bird head tilts. Mm, for sure. Yes. <laughs> so I think, um, I think your eyes may kind of involuntarily dilate a bit. Oh. And things kind of blur a bit in your vision. And, um... As you do so, the vessel seems to alter a bit. The wood around you brightens from being like this kind of like really deep and beautiful red and swirls of black. Almost there's like the floor is like a made of like this really intricately chosen zebra wood that is just amazing to look at. But it changes before your eyes, uh, kind of this kind of blurred, smoky vision. Um, like in film, how they do that kind of pinpoint focus where everything else is just a real stark blur. Mm-hmm. And you see um, you see everything's kind of like this marbly white. Um, and it's still wood. Um, you can still feel the warmness of the wood. Um, and you see people walking among 
all along the, the, the walkway in front of you, you see a, a couple. There's a, an elf woman and an elf man that are uh, coming down, talking as they're wa- winding their way down the staircase um, over to your right, like up ahead of you and on the right, the one that's on the midships. And you can hear the music that you were hearing in the, uh, um, the speakers now has more of a natural quality to it. But it does... Whereas the elves are kind of, these elves, everybody's an elf here, I should say. And whereas the elves are dressed in fineries and look, you know, pretty awesome, pretty (laughs) amazingly dressed. As your vision starts to blur and the music starts to kind of build in your ears, you start hearing different kinds of music. Not the like kind of like chinkling harps and stuff like that that you would normally hear of Elvish, of Elvish make. But it's different. It's got kind of like a... A grooviness to it like um, a, a mix of uh, well for for our own ears in the audience we start hearing like different tunes from the of a David Bowie selection um, that's kind of like winding its way through the years of his anthology and uh, yeah just as soon as that vision and that auditory hallucination kind of like takes place you kind of your eyes focus again and you're back and it's nighttime and you're, you know, the woods kind of like this deep red with blacks kind of swirled into it. Beautiful, but definitely not something else. So mm. as you come back to yourself, you realize that you feel kind of like this, almost like the presence that the presence of the people that you saw wandering around are still here mm. around you. You don't oh. see them, but you feel that kind of cold, clammy feel. Around <clears throat> Ghosts. You. Great. Love it. <laughs> So rem- remembering who the pale is. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. And I think as you snap back, the last echo you hear is uh, like David Bowie's last dance. <laughs> and, then that, and then it kind of descends way into, into memory. So what do you do? Like, how, do, you, how, do, you, what do you, what, how do you deal with that? Oh, I'm not liking this. Uh, honestly, Rio is already not liking being on a boat. <laughs> not, not really his wheelhouse. Uh, <laughs> can can you fly? I, uh, I'm honest. No, they they can't fly. No, that's lore. They can't. Okay. Well, that sounds a little creepy. Maybe the pale is here. <clears throat> Uh, you look, I look around to see where maybe the uh, music might be coming from, like uh, some sort of. Well, you saw that. You saw the uh, not not here. not the speakers, but you know the they're playing somewhere. So, is there any signs? Um, well, you have the these Florida ceiling cap- windows that um, okay. you know. Again, you have a picture of the riverboat, and it has it's basically like a. A three-story building just put on a raft um, with a paddle <laughs> wheel in the back. Just more beautiful. All right. And, uh, yeah, so you have these large windows that are kind of fogged up. Hmm. Is there a door inside? Uh, yeah. A there's hatch, a, towards the there's Towards the side, there's a double-entry door uh, made of fine wood on the frame. And then uh, the glass that's on it is kind of like a nice stained glass that depicts uh, a couple of waterfalls. I'm going to carefully and quietly open the door with a loud... <laughs> <laughs> you're going I think to trip into the door. <laughs> as you're looking at the doors with the waterfalls, you start singing, you know, don't go chasing waterfalls. You know, as you open it up. <laughs> and so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so like so you, you open the door and uh yeah so it there's a blast of cold air that hits you so i need you to make a constitution check if you would please oh. dc dc 11 Uh-oh. with a plus zero Uh-oh. Oof. Oof. all right Uh-oh. Um, if I can, uh, I can have you, uh, you're, for the next, like, minute, you're gonna have a disadvantage on, uh, disadvantage on... Oh, Never mind, I'm not gonna do that, no. <laughs> I was gonna change what I had written. No, um, for the next, for the next minute, you're gonna have disadvantage on perception checks. Okay. Right now, as you're, as you're kind of, like, given this, like, this cold chill that, like, just wraps you in the bone, like, straight to the bone, like, you're just like, oh! 
oh my gosh. Um, and it's, it's just instantaneous and you feel, you feel like there's somebody that just kind of passed through you, like a presence that passed through you. So I hear the police start to playing, I'll be watching. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay. So when that happens, is that something like, can, can we tell something's going on? I don't know. So what does it look like when you, when that, when that hits you? Uh, I don't jump back, but I kind of stumble back a little bit, shiver, like, <sighs> felt like there's a cold breeze coming out of there. So, um, I would like to do something to kind of counteract that, because okay, so so you know, you've kind of been given a chill, you've reacted a little oddly, so. Varaxa, she's a little concerned with uh, kind of the odd feelings that are going on on this boat, and something has clearly impacted Scowd. So I'd like to... Can I cast Bardic Inspiration, even though it's technically not on a turn? Because we're not... Yeah, it's, it's a bonus I mean, action on my turn. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we're not in initiative okay. right now. Okay, right. So, so that's what I was checking. So, so um, what I'd like to do, I cast Bardic Inspiration on Scald. And make sure you keep um, track of your usage on your character sheet. Yep. Too, so and so for the next 10 minutes, uh, one time within the next 10 minutes, you can roll the dice and add the number rolled to an ability check, an attack roll, or a saving throw. And you can wait until... You, you basically you can roll. I, I'll paste it in there, but I think you guys all have the same thing, right? Yeah, we all have bardic inspiration. Okay, so basically you 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 can add to your roll, but you ha- you have to decide before the DM says whether it's a success or failure. Right. Mm. Perfect. Okay. I'm gonna right. set a better myself. So um, you got that. Okay, so clearly something magical happened. Um, yeah. I think. I want to, um, all right, so what I'm going to probably do is I'm going to try to, so the, is the door closed or is it still open? Um, the doors are still kind of like open. And I think, Scout, did you hold on to the handles or did you kind of let them go and step back a bit? Uh, do they open out or in? They open outward. So I, I pulled I'm sorry, it. no, 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 I apologize. They open inwards. So did you go in or did you kind of stumble back and let go? Um, I was pushing on it just a little bit. And then when I stumbled back, I just shoved it wide open. Okay. So yeah, so, so the doors are, are still open. And I think that there's a mixture of condensation and the the humidity that's kind of in the air that's kind of resting over, the Saf- over Sapphire Harbor this time of season kind of mixes and creates a fog like right there at the doorway. Uh, but the doors are still open, and if you guys want to look inside, you can see inside. But it sounded like you wanted to do something else, I'm going to sign it. And I, I want to... Um, I, I, uh, this this magic obviously did something not so good to Scout. I want to try to cancel the pitch. Hmm. So I want to try to, dis- to cancel the pitch. Okay. Hmm. All right, so this is a dispel magic move. Um... Uh, is Dispel Magic, what level of spell is that? Is that a... It's a level it's three. A third level. It's a third level spell. Third level spell, okay. All right, so... Hmm. Okay. All right, so yeah, so you guys, you, you cast this and you kind of like push it into the room, right? You push it into the doorway. <laughs> I, well, I would push my ability because my ability is literally manipulating pitch and canceling it. Right. So I'd probably look at what the pitch of what's going on and try to like diminish it and, and silence it in a sense. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, okay. I'll roll with this. So yeah, so this this kind of like moves its way into the room, and it, who who's all looking into the room right now? Is everybody kind of looking through the doors or? What's yeah. happening? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. So inside the room, as you're, as you see, Young Asina is like using his tuning fork, and he's like kind of moving this this kind of counter song into into the room. As he does so, you see there is frost 
everywhere. This room is, is actually pretty well appointed. It's got several tables. There's a couple of um, areas where uh, um, uh, bartenders can uh, hold shop, that sort of thing. Um, there's a small stage in the middle that's a, round, it's a stage in the round. And, uh, but there is nobody here. Nobody here at all. And, but, the, but it's just got this kind of frost, uh, a rhyme all over everything. So this thin layer of frost. And as he pushes his countersong into the room, we start to see the frost kind of uh, defrost. You know, we, we oh. see it actually start to melt. Did you a cast a frost? Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, you cast a defroster. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so it kind of like makes its way into the room and starts to kind of dissipate the cold. And the cold that's kind of coming out from the room is, is starting to dissipate as well. We start to see fog kind of rising and swirling inside. And the windows that are nearest the door start to kind of create condensation and stuff. You start to see moisture on the outside as it, uh, as it builds outward. And uh, don't correct me on the science. I don't know it. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, so I think that uh, that happens. Oh. But, uh, but the room in the interior here is absolutely positively empty. Hmm. This does not seem good yeah, not for really. our for our our missing friends. <laughs> oh, and the mm. music stops. <laughs> oh, that's that's always ominous. <laughs> now all you hear is like the sound of uh, of water kind of lapping against the uh, against the bow and the against the ship. Okay. So does anyone else think that um, Pelothera maybe? Something went wrong with what she's been doing, possibly. Yeah. Or this right. <laughs> yeah, well, right for who? Because they're all missing. And I have a feeling that it's not in a good way. Yeah. No, not really. Yeah. So this is not good. I'm, I'm, I feel like we're, we're on the right track at this point. <clears throat> um, we've made it to the, you know, a, a key location here, but this is not good. Hey, okay. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Your voice. That was into the room. So echoes out and echoes into the room, and uh, yeah, there's nothing, nothing else. In the distance, you hear, you do hear some music, but it's coming from other boats that are out on the river, Destin and stuff. But whereas the music kind of sounded kind of harmonious and and uh, somewhat beautiful in its weird compositions of various cultures. As you're here, it kind of has like a weird, like swirling, distorted echo to it. You hadn't really noticed it until the the music coming from the little various speakers stopped. But yeah, it kind of gives you almost kind of like a sickly feeling in your gut. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the music on the boat stopped. Right, coming from the little speakers. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I look around for signs of anybody. Okay. So. I need somebody, not just <laughs> anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, uh. Before Richard Harrison's ghost shows up and tries to claim <laughs> me, um, give me a give me an a, uh, investigate or I guess a perception check to start with, but since you have the the bonus of your. Well, I guess you, you know, do you wish to use your bardic inspiration? Yeah, why not? I think you probably Very should. Good. Now, what die do I roll? Um, uh, D8, see. right? It says D6. It's a D6. A, no, a D, in mine D says D8. Yeah, oh, you, sorry, should, D8. you should all be That's at right. a D8 now. Yeah. yeah. That's right, D8. Once it's in the next, D8. you can roll the D8 and add it to the attack roll or whatever. Oh, max dice. Nice. Yeah. Wait, did he roll an investigation check? It was now the, it's oh. It. oh, yeah, it was a perception check. But still, that's... Now it's okay. What's your perception bonus? It'd be minus one from that. All right, so we'll get a 14 then. Total. And it's been at least 61 seconds, so... That's true. <laughs> that's true. Well, you didn't need disadvantage on this. You rolled a seven anyway, but... It's okay. Um, so yeah, so you're you're kind of like looking around in the area here, and you see over on the uh, the circular stage, uh, the the stage in the round. There's been um, uh, a, a symbol kind of like worked into the top of it, and I think because you actually because Angasinid had like caused this uh, the spell 
magic to occur, you can actually see what's been uh, put into the uh, put onto the wood. It's actually not worked into the wood, but it's actually drilled into the wood. These little apparatuses that are uh, all around, and um, it looks like basically a circle with uh, little spikes, little red spikes all around it, like a sunburst type thing, stylized thing, and. Uh, and there's a a crossed guitar and and sword that's been uh, that's been kind of like placed there on top of this apparatus. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Do we mm. recognize this symbol? Do we need to roll to try to recognize the symbol? Uh, yeah, you could. You could definitely. What will you roll for that? Um, uh, let's history. See. History. Right, I'll roll yeah, history. Good. I'm, I'm just guessing. Okay. Yeah. I'll roll history. Oh. I don't know nothing about nothing. I know my history. Um, anybody I know who a has, Anybody bit. who has religion could probably uh, look this up too. It's not a. Is this oh, one I got religion. Have, we have to roll one. I mean, is this one where you have to have it checked, or can you just? No, roll? you can roll it. Up okay. And, and uh, I probably won't go very far, but yeah. let's see what we got. Yeah, my history is my key. All right. So. Yeah. There's. Uh, I think oh, the one thing to one thing that uh, that you recognize is that the the symbol normally doesn't have a uh, a guitar and sword on it, but it actually has a uh, a letter on it. And I don't know if you recall from your last part of the adventure, the thing that you found in was it a V? Yeah, normally this comes with v a V for Varaxa. <laughs> 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 no, that ain't for you, honey. <laughs> it's all so, yeah. about me. Uh, and I think that um, having seen it kind of differently than what was normal, than what was seen in the room, um, I think between, um, yeah, I think between Rigo and and uh, and Varaxa, you're kind of like looking at it from a religious standpoint and also from a historical. Uh, but mm -hmm. the V is uh, stands for a name, a uh, name. Uh, titled Vinayas. Oh. And uh, it's a very old name. Um, it's a it's an old elvish name. Hmm. Okay, uh, it's old elvish name. I'm going to mention that name to Uncle Sinid and see if he recognizes it by chance. Um, wait, wait, what's the name again? <laughs> Vinayas. 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 Um, I don't recognize it. I mean, would I reckon should I roll to try to recognize it or um I'm just check it. Give me a give me a religion check. Let's see how you do. See if you've lost your religion. Oh. <laughs> all right, let me let me see. Ah, you're funny. Um <laughs> Alright, so what I'm gonna probably do to make this helpful for me is I'm trying to think if I should I'm trying to remember. Bardic inspiration, I can only give to someone else. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, other than myself, I can't do give to me. Um, I probably need some bardic inspiration. I need some help. I'd do that. it. All right, you're gonna give me a bardic inspiration. Yep, it's D8. Two. Okay, I'll roll my religion check. Yeah. Do, do. Okay. Um. I will add. Um, I will add the bardic inspiration. No, so I'll roll that D8. Yeah. What? All right. So I've got a sixteen. Yeah. Not bad. Okay. So. So thinking about this a little bit, um, you, you recognize this name a bit, and, and I think the combination of seeing the information in the Pales uh, room. And the things that you've learned there about, um, you know, her interests in the other world. Vinayas, for you, is, is one of the forgotten, forgotten gods of Elvish culture. Oh. Mm. It's been a long time, and even your parents, you know, they, they didn't talk much about it. I mean, they're, you know, they were musicians, and studying these discordant notes, that sort of thing. And it's, um, yeah. I think they were so busy developing their own thing that they didn't really have a lot of room for some of the old stuff. But 
you know, among you know, among other names and such that you uh, that you've seen, there's uh, you know Joh- Johan Bonham. There's uh, um, let's see, there's a couple of other ones that are out there that you've heard, but uh, but Vinayas is among them. Some of these older older gods that uh, just kind of fell out of favor or disappeared. So would he, would he technically be considered an evil uh, deity in a sense? You're not sure. Mm-hmm. You're not sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, obviously, if uh, his name has been involved, I, I would I would assume that um, that he's been there's been some evil meddling in this. So I think uh, so. I relay this information, um, and. Uh, we got to do something. This 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 is just continuing to look bad, but we're not really running into any people that we need to run into. Um, hmm. So we can't really see. Uh, I'm getting a little bit lost here. Um, hmm. Dang it, Games Workshop's going to come after us now. Huh? <laughs> Sorry. I'm just looking at the poster. <laughs> go oh, no. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh dear, we're horrible. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I have. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. Just so you know, like I'm literally the same boat. Ha ha. Yeah, we're anyway, all in the same boat right now. Um, that nice. that I see kind of what's the the big picture of we've got an issue here, but I have just, like zero idea of what we should be doing to solve this problem. <laughs> You just keep on hitting dead ends, it seems, or at least many dead ends. Hmm. Dead end. Dead is, I'm wondering dead if there's anything dead else. Dead 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 and you're okay. all dead. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a dead end. Oh, <laughs> rocks fall, everyone dies. The boat sinks, we drown. All right. Thank you all for uh, joining us. It's been a spectacular boat. time. Thank Good night. Thank you so much. How does that even happen? Okay. All right, so... Because the DM in, said so. From outside the double doors, you hear the music start again. But this time, there's not really any tuning going on. There is actually the sound of, like, the beginnings of a song. I think we should go follow the music. We're going to follow the music. That's my okay. thought. It's coming from everywhere. Can, okay. Can we find a control room? <laughs> Figure out where it's being broadcast from. <laughs> yeah, it might, right. be, might be towards the top. Okay. Got three levels on this. I got nothing other than that, so, All right, so someone gonna, has a better suggestion. I suggest we go up to the second level and see yeah. if there's anything up there. Okay. Right, so we're gonna go, we're gonna leave the room. Yeah, we're gonna go upstairs to the second level and see if there's anything there. Okay, so you've got um, the four corners of the ship. You've got uh, spiral staircases that lead upwards, and then also a midships on either side. So, how which one do you want to take going up? For me, the closest staircase, whatever that happens to be. So it'll be the yeah, one right close. outside these doors. There's a midships. Yeah. There's a stairway yeah, up. Yeah, we'll go to that one. Makes sense. All right. Yeah. So you guys make your way up to the second level. And very similar to the first level, this uh, this set of doors and the, the floor-to-ceiling uh, windows are all frosted, uh, frosted with cold. And you see light coming from within, but no movement. And that same music is still kind of drifting along from the speakers. Um, on this set of double doors, uh, rather than a um, uh, waterfall coming down, um, you see a, a pair of trees that are coming up, uh, willow trees, uh, with the, uh, you know, those, those weeping willow branches coming down, uh-huh. quite intricate right. and etched into the glass. I'm ready for this time. I'm going to secretly, stealthily open the door. Uh, <laughs> and the tree attacks. Should have poked um, it with a stick. <laughs> and I start with a stick. Singing well, about it, makes, it, it was better than your last roll. <laughs> if that makes you feel any better, justify that much. <laughs> so, I don't know any songs about um, trees. So the uh, the doors the doors open, um, and that same uh, blast of cold comes out. Um, but I think maybe you you might have girded yourself against it because you might have expected it. Because as soon as yeah. your hands touch those handles, they I mean you could feel the cold through. You know, do you wear those gloves, those fingerless gloves, or what do you wear? Just <laughs> through your hands. Um, with like the spikes on the back of the gloves, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. might as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go eighties, yep. go eighties, baby. So yeah, so you you grab onto it and you can yeah you can feel the the cold coming from the handles, and as you open it up. 
that blast of cold comes in. Um, it's a similar setup in here, but again, no people. There's frost all over the place. But f right at the floor, you're seeing some of it melt, and it's kind of emanating probably from the floor below where the dispel magic occurred. And like the floor below, there is a center stage in the round. Uh, but this time, there is what looks to be a, a tall pole, maybe like around five feet tall. Um, it's got um, odd-looking uh, brass cables that go around it and spiral around the center, uh, the center pole, and it has a circular stand below it. Um, that it uh, rests upon. And at the very top of it, there's this kind of crooked arm that, and it uh, extends to like an object, like a wand or something that's about yay, yay long. And uh, it sits there and... Dexter, you say you dodge out of the way. Um, and then right more next, of right using next, dexterity <laughs> with the pole. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> You dance the pole. No, um, it's, a, <laughs> it's it's only it's like a staff basically. It's like a staff with a crooked okay. end on the end there with this odd kind of brass cabling around it. That's the brass looks to like it's a little flexible because you can see it kind of move a bit in the the wind that's coming in. Um, and oh. next to it, next to it, there's another stand, but this one looks more like a coat rack, a small coat rack. And on the rack is a uh, a beautiful looking velour purple coat with. Uh, uh, fringed tufting all around. Um, it's like a deep purple that almost is black, and it's uh, oh, probably like, like a thigh, like a thigh length coat um, that uh, that descends down and has these these gorgeous looking like kind of gold and uh, pearl inlaid. Uh, uh, what are those like knuckle buttons that go through the loops on either side? I forgot what those are called, uh, but that's oh. uh, that's the coat that you see there, and both mm -hmm. of those are on the stage at this moment. Mm. See, when you say something's on the rack in in D and D, I would think it's like a person on a rack, not a fancy oh, coat no, on no, a just rack. Just a coat rack. Just a coat rack. <laughs> Individual coat rack, right well, next I'm to gonna, the other standing. I'm going to I'm going to do a slight bit of investigation on this coat. Yep. I am going to cast uh, identify, or as I call it, I the tiger. <laughs> I the tiger. <laughs> Like I think, like across the you know in the background, the, the audience hears the beginning, uh, beginning guitar riffs as uh, as, is, as your eyes kind of like oh like that, you know? <laughs> briefly dilate until so, yes, it slips. So, so yeah, suddenly I have cat eyes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's creepy. So um, so this is a detect magic. Is that basically what it is? Or yeah, identify? It's, basic, it's identify. Yeah, basically. Okay, so you're you're gonna go up to the stage then. So you're. Your, your feet kind of crunch through the uh, the snow um, or the rime, the frosted rime. But as you get closer to the stage, you notice, and along that walkway from the door, you notice that it's kind of melting a bit. So there's a little bit of a, um, a little watery type, slushy type sound as you're, as you're walking in. And you go up to the stage, and um, I'm going to need you, uh, you're going to have to step onto the stage to get the coat, and that's what you want to do, yeah? Yeah. All right. Can I, can uh -oh. I get a, a constitution save from you? Oh, uh, DC 12. Uh, con, con, con. Oh, my. Okay. Um, Jeff's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> How do I want to describe this? Because I want to make sure it's, like, unique for each of you. So, um, okay. So, I think what ends up happening for you is that you... You suddenly like feel yourself striking a pose, <laughs> and I want you to like. You start I want doing you to Vogue. Think, I want you to think of like the most like dramatic stance in which you play an instrument has ever been, and <laughs> I want you to describe that for the audience of what that looks like. God, uh, well, it, immediately when you thought when you said striking a pose, like my instant thought was like. Like the, the 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 pose on the uh, the Hamilton soundtrack, right? The the, <laughs> uh, the the yeah 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 for sure 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 yeah le le leg like spread one arm in the air and I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely thinking that but with a bass okay yeah so yeah your bass you have you 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 find your bass guitar in your hands and uh, yeah so you're like you're doing this whole thing like where you're standing like this and you are going to be uh, stuck that way uh, for uh, for the next minute <laughs> oh. Uh, and um, and I think like you start hearing like the beginnings of a tune. Um, it's like a, the sound of a guitar, and it's coming through the speakers, but it's also kind of resonating from this platform as well. 
And I think as you strike your pose, the end of your bass guitar kind of touches the 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 um, the stand next to you, and you hear mm-hmm. like a bit of a ringing, like a feedback sound, and then that fades away. What the rest? What do the rest of you do as uh, Rigo strikes a valiant rock pose? <laughs> Um, very, very, well. very, very slight distressed squawking. Yeah, as like much as I can manage. Yeah, you're trying to like kind of move your mouth, and a little bit of sound comes out, but you can move your eyes. <laughs> All right. Um, I thought the trap was gonna be on the coat. Who's uh, who's the first? Who's the person who's like around the front, like looking at her and looking at the guitar, oh, or looking looking at him and looking at the guitar and everything? Um. I don't know. You were drawn by the coat. I don't know that I would have walked up there with you. Let's see here. You can stay off the I stage just, if you want. That's fine. I just yeah. want to make sure the coat wasn't the one that was... I was sure it was the coat. <laughs> and if it wasn't magic, I was going to steal She's it. She's fixated on own. the shiny coat. Yep. It's a really okay, pretty see. coat, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's anything I can do that's useful. I can probably. I mean, do... I could. I could cast fairy fire on you so you glow while you're in your pose. <laughs> <laughs> that would make that... you. We're gonna make you look wonderful. That, I know. That I mean, would, you're I'll you're tell be you there that for a minute anyway. I'll tell you that wouldn't help me, but like it would just make me feel a little bit better about this. I know, right? <laughs> um, Let's see. Here. I feel like I need to do. I think in the uh, back of your head, Veraxa, when you have that thought, you hear. Mm-hmm. Bop, 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 bop. <sighs> It's like a like can, almost like a comforting like kind of like strum of of a musical a, a, a series of notes that's going along with this guitar type of riff that's starting. Yep. I, I could make it blue, green, or violet. My choice. Oh my <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, if you're stuck there too long, I can just be artsy with you. <laughs> I suppose I can. Oh, that's so funny. I can do another pick. I can do another pitch cancellation. Okay. That might be a good idea. That- I will say just on a meta note, it is only a minute, and uh, d- this well, we don't know that. But we don't know that though. To that be is fair, true. you're stuck there, and you can be stuck there forever, um, as far as we know. Yeah. Um, but can I? But I, you know, I should have been using detect thoughts on you all the time. I could be reading your mind all the time. That way, you would have to squawk on us. Oh. <laughs> And that yet, would have been a good plan going forward. And you're just telling me now. I know, right? I just figured this out. You just you, you made this poor boy squawk at you for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, so all right. <laughs> and you were, you are you are just willingly not listening to what he has to say. Yeah, right. It's exactly. very rude. It's very rude. Okay. Well, we need everyone. How rude. So... I guess I I don't know. If you, try, I would say uh, you should try the pitch cancellation to see if anything happens. Wait a All second. Right. Can I can I cast? Mm, frozen, no. aren't you? Yeah, unfortunately. I, oh. uh, well, maybe I mean, it maybe it took us a minute to figure out what we we're gonna do, and then after then it's over. She's <laughs> like, I'm good. Yeah. Free. Yeah. This um, is this is this is very possible because the discussion actually, we're well, having that's actually now. Not a bad point. This is so, probably what's happening. I think like you you suddenly kind of like get yourself under control as they're trying to decide which what to do, and as you find yourself back under control, like you feel suddenly you feel your bass guitar vibrating, and you look down mm-hmm. and you can tell that it's there's strings being plucked. And it's going along with this opening guitar riff that's that's started. Mm. And as you look around, they aren't on the stage. They don't see the same thing you do. But as your eyes kind of drift back and forth, you notice that around the stage, there's kind of this kind of glow on the stage itself, a circular glow. Mm. Can we hear the same music that, that Rigo's hearing right now? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Rigo, someone's playing your guitar. Here you go. I noticed. <laughs> ah! Sanity hey, check. That's right. Uh, I mean, I could, I could blow it up for you. No. <laughs> oh, the rudeness. <laughs> it's clearly possessed. <laughs> I'll put my hand on the strings and see if they stop. 
All right, so you, you have to get onto the stage to do that, unless Rigo wants oh, to come down. have fun with that. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll, uh, I'll not be thinking. Okay. First I'm, um, I'm, so give me I'm a, already, I'm give already me a standing constitution here, so... save. <laughs> no. DC 12. <laughs> Got a better than 50 right, we're all gonna, chance. We're all going to join the ghost Yay! band. Oh, uh, hey! Now I need levitate nice. to levitate y'all off the stage. Nice. Rolls yeah. a crit. Rock and roll, baby. Uh. Um, as you step onto the stage, the, uh, the music stops and the, the it last like couple it. notes that were being plucked on, uh, on Rigo's bass guitar cease and just kind of echo in the air. Must be hammer time. And you look around, uh, Scout, and you notice that the glow, there was a, as you got onto the stage, you saw a glow around this, uh, stage, this little, uh, circular stage, and it just dissipates as you stand on it. You broke it. I broke it. <laughs> Uh, okay. I'm gonna sign it. The uh, the thing that's the the coat and the stand that's there are starting to fade. No. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> guys. It, okay. What's hap? Oh no, they're fading now. Okay. Um. We're hitting another dead end. No, <sighs> oh, it's I, a dead can end. I, can we're, I grab at it? Can I grab at it? Can I grab at the coat? You your 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 taloned hand brushes along the coat, and you feel. The most warm and groovy oh my and God. charismatic <laughs> boosting velour that you've ever felt in your entire kinku life. There's shiny baubles on it that draw the eye. And you know that with every single movement, it would draw immense pleasure. But oh, just as you feel it, it fades from your grasp and disappears. And all that's left is a finely crafted coat stand. Brigo's going to dream about that coat forever. That that code is my, that code is my lost Lenore. <laughs> that code is my white whale. Your, your new your new lifelong quest will is be to, to rediscover the the coat to, to get a coat that awesome. Uh, so yeah, is that so, symbol we've seen uh, looks suspiciously like this one? Yeah, mm. it does. <laughs> but in this case here, there is no sword or guitar. It was just the stand and then the coat. Right. The coat has disappeared. The stand has disappeared. You know, and it uh, uh, just remains, all that remains is that coat, the coat rack thing that's there. Sad. Uh, all right, well, we've gotten more information, but we haven't gone to the third so, level. Yeah, very true. Um, but before we do that, do any of you guys have any idea, like, what might be going on? Anybody have um, some history and, you know, understanding of necromancy as to that might in, inform us on kind of, I'm, I'm assuming that would be, what kind of check could I do? I don't think do I have Arcana. Any. Yeah, Arcana would probably do it. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, short story I don't have ghosts. much, but. Oh, now it's pretty good. Oh, well. All right, helping you know. each other along, kind of going along with it. Um, all right, we got, I'm going to sign it. Scout, do you want to give it a go? Sure, I'd find the button. Ooh, oh, we should know something. Double 21. So I think between the four of you, you're recognizing what's called. <laughs> it's like an orchestration. Um, magic, and when it's related to music, can have layers. It can have uh, various parts of a symphony or parts of, uh, of a musical like composition. Onion. <laughs> and the it seems that as you go higher in these levels, there's another layer of this magic that's occurring. And whatever was occurring here has uh, entered its final stage. And kind of an answer to that, you hear the music start to grow and uh, become less of kind of like a uh, improvisational jam and is now becoming more of a song. And the the audience looking upon this and listening to the music recognizes the opening refrain of David Bowie's golden years as it starts <laughs> to kind of flow into existence. Okay. So based on that, um, could I either make the assumption or roll to determine if I could make the assumption that the higher we go, the, the stronger the magic and the, the like the, that we should be going higher to kind of get to the bottom of this. Like, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. it's kind of like when you're looking at the orchestration, you know, sheet music. You have the the bass layer, you have the percussion layer, and then you have like the lead vocals layer. So you're kind of like making your way up to the uh, gotcha 
to the uh, not just the rhythm but the melody. So Varaxa um, turns smartly in a very Mary Poppins kind of way and says, <laughs> "Onward and upward." Right then, <laughs> let's go. And so yeah, so the music continues, and the the vocals are not of a uh, of a male, but actually of a female, kind of like a ghostly echo to the uh, to the uh, singing. And uh, as you guys come up to come up to the uh, the top level, you notice that there's no door right here. Um, oh, don't touch it! <laughs> yeah, but well, it's just if there the was Florida, a door, don't touch it. It's the Florida it. ceiling glass again, um, but this time it looks like the the direction for uh, an entry is towards the back. It's towards the uh, um, the stern. So mm. as you guys make your way around there, um, you're looking at the panes of glass that are along here, and these are more like stained glass all along the uh, the walkway here on this third level, this top level. And uh, the stained glass shows like various depictions of, um, I don't know, performances, you know, elvish performances, that sort of thing. And there's always a central figure, this kind of silhouetted figure that's been kind of like worked into it. And one of them, as you're about to cross the corner around or turn the corner towards the stern, that last panel window looks uh, strikingly familiar. Um, and it is the drawn silhouette that you found on the music in the Pales room. Hmm. So is it is it still is it still a silhouette in this image? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh. But it does now that it's in this taller form, you do notice that it is uh, the silhouette does have a striking three quarter coat. <laughs> And is holding and is holding that same staff that you saw in the level below the floor below you. Kind of holding it like this. <laughs> All, right, All right. So yeah, and as you come well, around, so you come team. around the corner, you see there are double doors right there. And uh, in this one, uh, there is a uh, there's a an etching of that same figure. You can tell it's it's there they've been Dedicated towards capturing the frame of this figure, but they've put them into a gentle repose upon a chaise lounge. Um, still a, uh, still basically a silhouette, but you can tell that this is a kind of a relaxed pose, and the doors are are there before you. Uh, um, I, have, I, have an, I have an idea for something to do, but I don't have enough information to actually pull it off. Are the the drawings in the door? Um. They've been there. This isn't an effect, right? No, no. All along, the glass has been kind of had some decoration. It's mostly just been the double doors. Like you had the waterfall, then you had the weeping willow. Um, but on here, this top level, it really is kind of showcasing the, the quality of, of uh, workmanship here. So I point out, I was like, I wonder if this is the laughing cleric. And then I stealthily, sneakily open the door. <laughs> Third time's a charm. 20. Well... <laughs> No. This well, this is better than the last roll. <laughs> it is. It quite. It quite I'm is. figuring this door thing out. Um, we're we're <laughs> we're improving slowly. It's baby yeah, steps. Yeah. So you you open the doors. Do you open both doors or just one? Maybe it's the eleven is that you open both doors. Maybe <laughs> maybe sure. that's what yeah. it is. I mean, so in, ready. in retrospect, having the dwarf who's uh, dressed in glam rock pastel neons. And wearing, uh, maybe and wearing, maybe like, it was yeah. not the most stealthy option we could have gone with. Well, so I have I, a plus I, three. I forgot. Mm -hmm. is he, is he, are you wearing I, uh, like the, uh, the, the high platform I have a plus eight in stealth. Boots? Maybe oh. I should have been doing this. <laughs> oh, no. Right. Is Scout wearing those platform boots like, you know, like Kiss or something? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I was trying to remember the picture. I think he does. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. So, I think you, like, you open the door and all of you are kind of like gathered around him. And uh, letting Scout do this. This time, there's... There's that cold, but there's no frosted rime. You know, there's there's no f layer of frost on the area in here. Everything is still kind of that that wood quality. But you're looking into what appears to be a concert hall, and there's a large stage in the back with curtains drawn. And uh, upon this stage, you see three figures, um, and you'll never guess who they are. Can you, oh. Can you guess? oh, and you have. Um, you have a, uh, a slim, willowy figure of the pale standing at, uh, standing at another, what looks like the staff you saw before, 
but uh, is a little bit different. It's not as intricate. And she's singing into it, and you start, that's the voice that you've been hearing, play, uh, singing The Golden Years, that song. And, uh, and over to her, uh, to her stage right, her left, but your stage right, is Alician strumming, strumming his guitar. And um, uh, opposite that, or behind him, is Krim standing atop a uh, contraption of some kind that uh, he's, he's like manipulating and changing, and it's kind of given that percussion, the, the drum effect in the background. Drum machine. Yeah, drum uh-huh. machine, baby. So what, what do you do? Well, they found him. They found him, finally. Okay. Uh, we probably... Game over. Oh. <laughs> oh, we Yay, we did it. win. Okay, so they're playing. Do they seem aware of us? Uh, yeah, I think the pale looks up and sees you. Alicia right now is just kind of like in the midst of like kind of like a... Like a, he's kind of in a trance right now. His his null mm-hmm. eyes are closed and his mouth is slightly open. His long tongue is kind of lolling out to the side as he's uh, he's just kind of like in the groove playing his guitar. Um, and then yeah, and then Krim is in the background on top of this uh, contraption, um, kind of making it work. Uh, you do see kind of a bluish glow behind the pale um, uh, on that stage, but you're, the stage is like maybe five five, six, seven feet up, and you have their stairs on either side. Um, Up ahead of you, there's a uh, small wrought iron circle that uh, is basically a set of stairs that um, looks like it leads down, but right now the the opening is closed. Like you can't, uh, you wouldn't have been able to get up from there. So I think, so I think we would probably like go right up to them because... We found them. I say we don't all go at once. I'll, I'll go. Would like to, okay, I'll definitely go would choose I was... to approach. I'll, I'll, I'll approach with okay. Kitar at the ready. Right. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll bring you guys over to uh, to what this looks like. You may have to kind of like blow up your map a bit because it's the map quality is a little <sighs> bit small. But, uh, so you may have to kind of like zoom in a bit on it. Uh, but you guys are at the bottom of the uh, bottom there. So oh, yeah. yes, yes. you should have control over your characters. Let me know if you don't. I I do, do not. Oh, I do not. Oh, I do, oh wait. I'm good. Here I we go. Not. There you go. Wait, I, I can move um, it, but I can't use arrows, so I don't know why. Arrows. Uh, hmm. uh, arrow keys, I mean. Arrow oh, keys, yeah, I mean. that's weird. I don't know why. Oh, maybe because I don't have a grid active on this. That might be. Yeah, weird. there's not a grid active, uh, yeah. so it's a, okay. it's a little tricky. But it's yeah. okay. We'll, so we'll, yeah, so we'll be fine. that's kind of like difficult terrain there. You're kind of weaving your way through the small chairs that are there, but you can make your way through it. That's not a problem. Then there's that central aisle up in, in the middle, and so the pale like uh, she sees oh. you all approaching, and uh, she signals over to Alicia and uh, says, "Why is it that you're here? You've come to play uh, play with us." Well, mostly we wondered where you were. Meriwether is looking for you. and not seen you for days. Meriwether. <laughs> um, so is what's his name? Yeah, what's so his is, name? So is Slash. We had to have a little talk with him. <laughs> we didn't <laughs> intend on doing that, but... You might want to hold up your palm. <laughs> with we your definitely tattoo. had a bit of a talk with him. <laughs> Like an instant when you think about the contract and you hold your hand up, it appears in your hand and it kind of like just opens up <laughs> and the words glow on the paper. And then as you like bring your hand down, it disappears. It like nice. and it disappears. <laughs> and she, she smiles. Uh, she smirks down from the stage and, and Alicia over at the side, um, he just kind of like has that kind of knollish hyena laugh, you know. <laughs> what kind of gig you got going here? Uh, all contracts will be rendered useless in the matter of moments. And this as, for Mary, as for Mary Water, eh, he's broken his last heart. Oh. So I'm getting... This is one of those things where you summon all the ghosts and ruin the city, because I like the city, and I have none of that air. <laughs> 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 Love it. Eh, there are... <laughs> There are plenty of those from the afterlife who would be pleased by what's happening now. 
Hmm. But the thing will not come down. present life who would not be pleased. Uh. Who are you to say such things? You have a noble ancestry. You are from dragons. You are from an age that uh, reveres such things. No? Powerful music has brought you here. Yes, but missing people have brought me here when I should be elsewhere preparing my music. Hmm. You would be those missing people. So we need to get you and get you back where you belong. Oh, but I am where I belong. Yeah, and perhaps, I think there are people who beg to differ. Perhaps, perhaps hmm. you are where you belong. Eh, Varaxa? Hmm. Hmm. You are always longing for something greater. Never part of the band. Always one to be featured. Would you not like to be featured in the best performance of the year, of the century, of the age? She's slightly intrigued. I think it's a trap. Oh, screw this. I am, I am, I am just, I'm, stra I'm says. straight up, I am straight up hopping on, like, onto these chairs with my talons, and I'm just fluffing myself up and gripping my guitar in a casting pose. Oh. <laughs> screw she, this. She, uh, <laughs> all right, roll initiative! No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, no, are you going <laughs> to cast, or are you just kind of, like, getting yourself? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just threatening. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. So she, uh, she smiles and says, whatever you think that you want to do now, mind the furniture. I would like things to be presentable for our honored guest. This is a new so, pale. <laughs> I, so, I, kick, I kick a chair over out of spite. <laughs> so Varaxa walks way up here. What exactly are you proposing to do here? Because again, she's slightly intrigued. <laughs> I have seen the city rise from the ashes of its betters. But I also know that my people allowed this to happen. They allowed our god to leave and to seek music elsewhere. I will bring him back. And there will be a new dawn of proper music here. A new dawn of rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. does this sound like... A good new or bad new? Uh, my spidey senses say no. <laughs> uh, I want to uh, let's see. Was it insight? Sure. Yeah, I definitely need to roll insight on this. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm at least as insightful as I am stealthy. So, as you guys kind of approach this stage, especially those who are taller than five hey. feet, oh. nice. Um, you <laughs> notice that there is this kind of like circular glow that's behind her. That uh, that kind of takes up part of the stage there. Um, like, for... is it a is it a a presence or just a glow? Um, well, I'm I'm checking Arcana, so I could definitely be looking about the presence. Okay. Okay. All right. So for insight, we'll start with that. Um, she's uh, so you're looking in insight into her. Right? Yeah. Is this something? Is she thinking this is? Is it some good? Is she bonkers and is she going to wreck the place? She's thinking that it's something good. Um, it's something that she's been waiting for a long, long time. And it is something that will bring about a new age. And for those, and she wishes to be a part of it, if not the beginning of it, she wants to be a part of it so that that way, when it happens, she can take advantage of it. She wants to be in the room where it happens. Okay, so um, Rigo, can you tell if it's a presence of some sort? Uh, I don't know, can for I? Rigo, for Rigo, yeah, there is uh, there's something coming. <laughs> yeah, I don't like oh, this. Can I cast no. detect thoughts on that something? Yes, mm. yes you can. Okay, Ooh. I would like to do that. I would like it if you did that. Shenanigans, okay. nothing, we call them. Nothing would please me more. Okay, so there we are. <laughs> Checking thoughts. Nothing is more terrifying Let's than something it. pleasing the DM. Uh, oh, I'm trying to see uh, what the. So initially, you learn the surface thoughts of the creature, what is, or what is most on its mind at that moment. It's an action. You can either shift your attention to another or attempt to probe deeper. Okay, so initially, what do I get initially? So, so surface thoughts. 
I've been a, uh, I've been away too long. It is time for me to return. I'm being called back to the stage that was once mine. And I will. I will bring the music back with me. That's what I've learned. And for those who wish to be a part of it, I will bring them into my band. And we shall rock righteously forever. <laughs> okay. All right. So then I would like to then use an action to probe deeper. In which case, um, the target has to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh boy. There we yeah, go. There's, that's the wisdom saving throw right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Shenanigans. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mean to make accidental uh, uh, fully work for you, but here we are. All right. So the audience is going to see that I made this, but they'll see by how much. But um, yeah, he's oh fine. Okay. So. Oh. Fun. If but, you, so you didn't fail. Let me see. If it succeeds, but here's the spell the th- ends. Here's the, thing, okay. here's the thing. Your spell doesn't end. Um, in fact, you're in your mind's eye, in the eye of the arcana, you, you see it's almost as if the wings of dragons part before you like a curtain. Oh, and, uh, and you see that you see that figure in your eyes, that silhouetted figure that you've seen etched onto the windows and the, the, the drawing that was on the back of that sheet music. But this time you see them full in your eye. And okay. it's, uh, he's wearing that coat. He's got a, a, a microphone stand in his, in his arms that he's holding. And uh, he's, he's backlit, but it's, it's almost kind of like a light that's lifted upward and kind of just enhances his beauty. Um, I mean, it's David Bowie. That's what you're looking at right now. <laughs> oh my god, yes. And, uh, Is it David and, Bowie uh, from Labyrinth? Because that's even better. It's whatever David Bowie you want him to be. <laughs> uh, and, uh, he, he reaches a hand towards you and, uh, and he Uh-oh. says, uh, let's dance. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh. See, now, see oh. now I'm visualizing the, the Labyrinth scene where they're dancing around. See? Sure? Okay, yeah. Oh. Yep. Oh. I, I can't believe we're fighting like Elven God David Bowie. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. She's, she's she's um dun, very dun, seriously dun, tempted. Like dun, there's nothing dun, 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 that makes her not want to do this right now. Well I'm gonna awesome. step right here and put on your good right. shoes and dance the yes. blues. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're this isn't gonna happen. Okay. All right. But so, but but it's David Bowie. <laughs> it is David Bowie, but David Bowie's gonna overrun the world with ghosts. Oh come on! Ah, no. It'll be amazingly musical ghosts. I am. This is true. And I'll be featured. <laughs> Rex, this isn't the time. It's always um, the time for me so to be like, featured. I think like Dead the last. Dead Elf God like David Bowie feet image. Viraxa. The last image that you see is you and him, like standing on the back of a flying dragon, yes. and just like oh just and just like you, all you hear is just like the strings of like just guitars blaring oh, from behind. No. As you soar they upon, fly off into the as you soar upon the notes of rock and roll that carry you <laughs> high above. Oh my gosh! And then you're kind yeah, of like yeah, you're yeah. kind of like back into the state. You're back into this uh, performance mm-hmm. stage, back into the area, into the room. And uh, uh, and I think for the rest of you, you see, it's 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 basically like an irising opening, opening on the stage, and there's a figure that's Stargate. coming up from the below. So what do you do? And roll I think for the, I think the, I think the pale says like right, but as you roll for initiative, uh, the mayor Salin approaches, and uh, let me uh, let me grab the initiative order here. And yeah, make sure you grab your token and uh, then go roll your initiative so that he appears. Here we go. Oh my gosh. 17. Why don't you uh, grab your token and then re roll it for me, uh, Scout? And then I'll <gasps> replace it if it, I'll replace it with 17. Okay. I, I was too quick on the initiative. <laughs> no worries. Oh, sick. All right, cool. Being that Somebody better be going initiative. in front of me because I might be climbing up on that stage. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Yeah, let's see. Oh, yes. I've got so something will... ready. 
Oh, I got something oh. for you. Got something for oh, you. No. All right, so we'll do that. Braxa clearly does not make good decisions. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, no. Then, uh, oh, no. Let's oh, no. see. I'll just leave that with the pail. I'll just have the pail have that. That'll be the initiative for everyone. Okay. And then, uh, last but not least, make sure I have this uh, all set up. Blammo. Too many things going on. We're almost at the end. So what is, um, out of curiosity, what is Alishin and Krim doing? Are they like kind of like possessed by pale in a sense? Uh, no, they they seem like they're all kind of part of it. Crim's kind of quietly like working the percussion machinery in the background, all right. so that's kind of like what he's doing at this point. All right. Okay, so I think uh, at this stage, uh, what we're gonna do <laughs> at this stage, get it. <laughs> um, there's somebody. Stage. There's somebody that uh, that rolled the best out of all of you, and I think he appears this round, but doesn't take any action <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> as he arrives from from across the realm. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! Oh, no! I, I can't is about to go all fight early. early. Elven yeah. god David Bowie. Elven god David <laughs> Bowie appears before you. Brax um, is fangirling on you. So there you go. Uh, so that's his turn. Next we got Rigo. I uh, I let out a mighty cry in my uh, in my uh, in my Kenku voice that any anyone that could translate would say, "I want your coat." Yay! And Great motives. I, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to leap forward and I'm going to cast True Strike. Nice. Okay. Guns and ships. Awesome. <laughs> I uh, get a brief insight into target defenses. On my next turn, I get advantage of my first attack roll against this target. All right. Very cool. So you have that ability now. Awesome. And you move up forward. That is... Yes. That is your turn. Why is mm -hmm. Scout should have been for before you? Why didn't it take that to, to account? Oh. Let me Weird. redo that. All right, Scout, you go up next. Okay. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work past, uh, we'll go past Rigo then. Okay, Scout, what do you do? Um, I'm seeing if I can move where, see, if I go uh, here to these stairs, will that do any opportunity attacks versus me? Mm, Alicia might have an opportunity attack on you. Okay. Hmm. Uh, what the heck? I'll do it anyways. Uh, so, five. how tall is the stage? About five feet. Okay. Okay. All right. So you try and make your way across, make your way past him. Yep. He lashes out with his guitar, which surprisingly <laughs> enough whips out from his shoulder, um, off the shoulder strap as he uh, swings it toward you with a a vicious uh, vicious snarl, and misses. Oh. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna. So, what do you do when you get up there? I do a thunder wave. Oh snap! Yeah, and the thunder um, rolls. I assume and I can. Strikes. I can cast it at my highest available level. That's oh, but that would use a spell slot from there. That so, if I cast yes. at level three, then I remove a level three. Okay, correct. So I'll pick oh, and Crim's nine. right there. Crim's right there above you. Yeah. So I don't think I'll get the the farthest, but good lord! I see dice, lots of dice. I see lots of dice. Twelve points of damage. DC fifteen. Con. All right. Uh, let's see. That's gonna catch. I guess that'll catch Vanias in there. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Constitution. It's a cone, right? It's uh No, I don't think it's a cone. It's, it's, it's a every square, direction. Fifteen foot square out from me, so Yeah. Uh yeah, it's up your call. I mean if you it, yeah, where you where are you measuring from? If I measure from the center, 
to yeah. into the square. Yeah, that's that works. I that works. All right, all of them have to make it. Here we go. We're we're coming Even to the Elven end. We need God to, David we need to like, have some spectacular. All mm -hmm. right, Vanessa Helene is uh, is not shaken, nor is he stirred by your uh, uh, by your uh, attack. Uh. However, he will take uh, take four points of damage. All right, the pale shall go next, and her Constitution save. Nope. She does not do uh, well at oh boy. all. At all. Wait, Falls off the stage. Over, skipped over someone, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, she gets kicked off onto this this direction here. Um, falls off the her? stage. <laughs> um, uh, you could do a reflex save. See if you can catch her. Sure. Let's see. Let's see if I can. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, see, on a failed save there, push 10 feet away. On a success, uh, they take half as much and isn't pushed. Oh, fun. Is there right. a... So, wh why do do they take 12 damage because I cast at a higher level? Or, I'm not sure what... This oh, wait, that's you... right, that's right, because it's um 2d8. That's right. And you, yeah, add yeah, a D yeah. and you add a d8 on top of it, or a d... Yeah, d8, yeah. So, is so it 3d8 I, I just, total? I'm, I don't know how to read this. <laughs> well, if it's 3d8 total, then it rolled 3d8 for you. Um... And I think you would have had to add the totals together. So 21. So, all right. So let me minus off another couple from here. And then minus off another 10 from here. Oh, piece of junk. Come While on. they're doing that, guys, does anybody know where the reflex save type thing would be? I think. Um, over on the left-hand side, um, there's a uh, saving. There's a uh, uh, dexterity save. Sorry. Uh, let's do dex a dexterity Wait, That's fine. That's fine. Work. Um, and that's probably okay. a different role. All right, so Alician also fails, gets knocked uh, in this direction here, and uh, takes twelve damage, and is prone. Hits the hits the uh, hits the chair. I'll give him another another five damage. Wait, twelve damage? No, wasn't it full damage? Oh, sorry, twenty one. That's right. So yeah, nine. There we go. All right, cool. All right, scoured. And what about uh, this guy? Oh, Krim? Him? Yeah. Oh, it's an emanation. That's right. Okay. Uh -huh. Krim, Constitution. Doesn't Elven save. God David Bowie take damage too? He, he did, did take some. <laughs> okay, sorry. Right, I missed so, the wrong one. Um, Krim is Ouch. dead. <laughs> You're supposed <laughs> to retrieve him, not kill him. <laughs> you killed him. <laughs> the drums machine splinters and apparently impaled him. Oh, no. Oops. And in the distant tunnels of the rainbow, we see Slash turn his head as he feels a contract broken. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling no. you, you have got, and inside, you've got to see that part of Supernatural with the contracts. So this is so much inside like, that. like a Inside like a little cubby in a shelf, we see one that's labeled with Krim's name, and it just kind of self-immolates and burns. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Oops. That was Scout. Varaxa, you're up next. So did I catch her? You did, actually. You catch her. She lands in your arms. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with her yet, but... But <laughs> I, I caught her. her. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Because I'm very torn. <laughs> I'm very torn here because she's... She's, uh, she's got me... Or, well, David Bowie's got me interested. <laughs> um, so okay. Bowie knife to your heart, baby. Apparently so. Let's see here. So Vraxa is now like here, yeah, holding on to Helithera. And also, we can now see that we have killed one of the people that we are supposed to be retrieving. Dead. Which hopefully will bring me back into reality of, you know, we're supposed to be, we have a job here to do. Yes, I want to be. Fit. See, what the problem is that I have this, this, these like. Uh, personal issues where I want to be famous no matter what it takes sure. um, and I feel very underappreciated and here I'm being offered the chance to be very much appreciated and famous sure. so yeah this is a problem um, hmm. Five, okay four, three, I know can two, I one I guess I can close out. I, <laughs> I wonder if I could cast. <laughs> I could cast <laughs> hold person on the elven god. I don't know if that would do any good. Hold me. 
Do we think that would be any use? Oh, I guess I don't know. Closer, tiny, tiny dancer. dancer. <laughs> sure, why not? Oh my. All right, so Don't leave me, David Bowie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll, uh, I'm assuming he's within 60 feet. Sure. Uh 17. That's probably way too high. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. he's fine. Okay. Um, he like he he kind of shakes his head a little bit, and his hair kind of like flows, and he <laughs> and he kind of like he brings the microphone up, and he's all charming as ever. <laughs> God damn oh, it, David Bowie. Okay. Um, okay. Then 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 before we do anything else, let me see. I can't even be mad at him. Okay. <laughs> let's see. All right. Um, just because there's part of me who's trying to do the right thing, um, I'm going to cast Bardic Inspiration on Rigo. Okay. Um, as a, a bonus action. Nice. So you've got that. Nice. All right. Maybe in the hopes that someone will make a good decision as I stand here and hold pale. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. All right. Uh, that is Varaxa. Now it's the pale and the rest of the group's turn. Or well, the two left. Um, all right. I think Elysian is going to... Um, yeah, I think he's going to I think he's gonna try and uh, take a swing at Rigo since he's right there. So he uses half his movement to stand up and uh, is no longer prone. And uh, actually, you know what? No. Uh, give me an attack, <laughs> on, uh, give me an attack on Elysian, if you would, me? please. Yes. Because oh, you're getting an gracious. attack, you're getting an attack of opportunity on him. Huh. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, my rapier is gonna be what's out. So. All right. That is <gasps> a hit. Roll damage. Sick. Lifeson, I love it. Yeah, and the my dagger's named also named Pert. My six. Oh man. So yeah. So your 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 rapier lashes out and strikes him well. And uh, he he takes it and he like he he takes his guitar and he strikes like a a, th a three note like hammer and a bam bam or no a two note and a three note four note bam 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 I I I and he strikes <laughs> you he casts vicious mockery upon you Ow. and uh, ow <laughs> uh, oh shoot now I don't have his DC written down what an idiot. Uh, DC 12, okay. uh, wisdom save for me, if you would, please. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. So you take no damage from his psychic uh -huh. maelstrom. He just rock Sucks out. Yeah. You. yeah. So he's trying to do that. So he doesn't move anywhere else. He stays engaged with you. Uh, the pale will, um, she will, she looks back at you, um, Varaxa, uh -huh. and says, uh, she says, you know, there's no reason to fight. There's no reason for this to be a confrontation with the mighty god Vanaeus. Join us. You know it is in your heart. And she tries to cast Enthrall upon you. Oh, fun. I'll pop that in there. So if I could get a uh, wisdom saving throw to target number DC 14. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> I have a negative one to wisdom. Oh, snap! <laughs> <laughs> so if she weaves a distracting string of words causing the creature of your choice that you can see within range and that can hear you any creature that can't be charmed succeeds automatically there's advantage save blah 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 checks made to receive da, da, da. any creature other than you until the spell ends the spell ends if you incapacitate or can no longer speak do you weave distracting words that's all it is is you just distract them so you have the distracted condition is that what it is is that what I'm picking up I'm not sure let me, let me look see. that up all right, enthrall. Come on. Help if I spelled it right. <laughs> Sore kids. All right, uh, let's fail save. The target has disadvantage on wisdom perception checks made to perceive any creature other than you until the spell ends. So you're kind of like looking at them and you're, you're staring at the pale and you're, you're kind of given a moment to kind of consider your actions before you, uh, before you uh, continue. But uh, but yeah, 
I should have done Tron person. That's on my own mistake. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so you're kind of enthralled for a bit, just kind of staring at her as she like tries to bargain with you to uh, cease your hostilities. Anga Sinid, it's you. All right. Um, all right. I'm really disturbed by this. <laughs> Especially being an elven deity, that's no fun. Sorry. Uh, so I'm going to target my attention to the deity, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to cast Cloud Burst. Oh, my. Mm. I'm going to cast Cloud Burst um, toward it, which is actually my Shatter spell. Uh, oh, I'm going to cast it at work. Let's have it. Let's get that so damage. cloud burst, um, DC fifteen Constitution, fourteen points of damage, DC for half, or save for half. Yeah, half. Yeah, basically. All right, all right. Condor, um, here it comes. <laughs> Ooh, twenty two. But still, all right, pass. No half damage. Half damage isn't bad. That half damage That's is better bad. than no damage. So, um, when I cast this spell, um, it's actually kind of cool, um. So I don't know if anyone actually listened to the piece. I actually posted Cloudburst in our in uh, our, our group. Cloudburst has this moment um, where um, it's like a bunch of like pitches coming together, in a sense. And it like since it's a, it's a thunder attack in a sense, um, it like comes all together and it's all a bunch of dissonant pitches and it like raises in volume. And all of a sudden, it just claps in a sense. So mm. it, it's so it's it's a loud clap, and then it it, it dissipates. It like it dissipates with um, the sound of rain. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's I cool. Like that. um, yeah. So like you 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 hit him with that, and um, you know he kind of like he kind of like he looks at his coat and he kind of like checks it for a little bit as he's holding the mic stand, and uh, he looks down over towards you. And he says, uh, there's a part of you, baby, that wants me here. <laughs> Don't lose to the human side of you. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to move or are you going to stay there? Um, I'm going to basically move um, over to... Uh, I don't know if I should go on the stage with uh, Scout. Um, well, I mean, I would like to share a stage with Scout, uh, but not <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, There's no, only I, one other guy up here besides me. So. No, yeah. I know. Uh, so I'm going right for the action. I'm going right there because this is just, this is not happening. Uh -uh. It's rough. It's rough. It's a bold move. It's a bold move. I like it. But unfortunately, he doesn't really like the fact that you guys are attacking him. Um, Imagine that. So hmm. uh, let's see. I think what he will do is attack you back. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, he 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 his hand kind of releases from the uh, uh, from the, the the mic stand, and the mic stand kind of like stays there, kind of like floating in front of him. And uh, he, he moves his hand up like this and extends his hand out like this. And all of a sudden, the uh, um, prince's guitar from Purple Rain appears. And he, <laughs> strikes a, he strikes a chord. And he enacts what's called a, uh, a face-melting solo. As it <laughs> extends outward in a 15-foot cone. Holy crap. Uh, towards, let's see, which way should I go? I guess it'd have to be scowled because... He, like, he really hurt. Really hurt him. So here we go. That's a 27 to hit. I'm assuming that hits. <laughs> Probably. All right, so give me a DC, it's literally DC 16. literally face-melting Zolo. Give me a DC 16 saving throw, if you would, please. Oh Dexterity? Uh, constitution. Oh. It's a sonic damage coming at you. I'm dead. Oh, no. Uh, no. But can I use inspiration? Uh, that sure. Normally you're supposed to declare it beforehand, but yes, why not? It's Mark check. So I uncheck it. Uncheck it. And then I, you get an 18, it, you save. Okay. So six points of force uh, sonic damage at you as he racks, rocks a cord right in your direction. 
All right. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, I think that's his turn. Do I hear an echo in here? <laughs> so, Scout, you're up, man. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Wait, um, before I do that, before that happens, um, could I technically use, um, I'd like to do a reaction and you use cutting words. Is that possible? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? What does that do again? All right, uh, so cutting words, uh, when a creature that you see within 60 feet of me makes an attack roll, an ability check, or a damage roll, I can use my reaction to expend one of my uses of bardic inspiration, rolling a bardic inspiration die and subtracting the number roll from the creature's roll. Um, so I'm going to actually do this um, with a damage roll. All right. So okay. let me, so I'm going to roll bardic inspiration on this give damage me, roll. Give me a D8. Will do. Ah, that's okay. Uh, you get a point back. That's good. It's better than nothing. But that's awesome. I like it. All right, Scout, what do you do? It's all your right. Turn, man. I think we're going to need uh, advantages against this uh, dude. So I'm going to give us advantage to attack. Um, with fairy fire, so... All right, so you're casting this upon... Yeah, uh, so it has a dexterity... Um, yeah, 20-foot cube, so pretty much just this guy. All right, so you're casting it on Vinaeus. Yeah, Vinaeus. All right, here he comes. So make a dex save. Yeah. He fails! He's got wow! a All right. Hey! So any attacks, we have advantage on him, and he's glowing. Oh, uh, what color is he glowing? Violet. Violet. I already, I already Violet. have advantage on attacks on him. Do I well, have no. double advantage? <laughs> no, everybody has advantage. Everyone yeah. has advantage on him. <laughs> All right, which is helpful. So, oh, the, the aura is not big enough. I have to actually make the aura bigger because he's so big. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. So he's going uh, blue. Oh, blue! Gosh dang it! Oh, sorry, I can't see it, so I didn't know you. Oh, no, 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 right. I can't He's blue. Dabba dee dabba die. That's weird that it doesn't. Dabba dee dabba die. All right. Maybe I have a setting. I'll look at my settings. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. We're all we're all friends here. We know that he's glowing. It's happened. He's... Yeah, but I don't want to see it. <laughs> he's simply glowing. <laughs> You'll see it on the video. All right. Are you gonna hey, move or are you standing your ground? Oh, that's a good question. Um. Um. I'll move here. All right. And that is it for you. Rigo, you're up. All right. Well, I've got uh, I've got this growly jerk in my face, so I'm going to do something about that. <laughs> Don't you even. <laughs> Remember, you still have that extra roll or whatever if you need it. That's right. The oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Hmm. I guess I could if I put it in the right spot. I probably could have. No, nah, then I would have hit. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. What are you doing? What are you doing? You yeah, wily gonna... kinku. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah. No. Uh. Well, I'm gonna have to hop forward so that. Uh... Braxa isn't in my cone, but I can do a uh, thunder wave. Okay. Decide. Uh, I'm gonna cast at. It's cast not a level one. It's not a cone though. It's a. Oh, it's a cube. Uh, if you well, hop, it's, it's, if you if you hop this way. I don't know. No, you can set it like south of him or something like that over here, and that'll do. Oh, it. I can. It doesn't emanate from me. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean it emanates for me. That's right. That's right. So don't rock scout. You may have to go south. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Away from 
Oh, like that way, yeah. Like step yeah. around him in that direction. Yeah, it's only. But, does, but doesn't it's stepping a, wouldn't stepping away from him get an attack of opportunity anyway? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to aim it this way. I'm gonna have to see this this way. And it's five, ten, fifteen. That way, you guys aren't in the cube. Which is mighty nice, considering that I'm helping the enemy at this point. Well, not really. I'm just not doing much of anything useful. Uh, 15 foot cube. Originating from you. Yeah, I mean, that would catch Scout, and that would catch... No, it's... No, a cube goes forward. A sphere is around me. Oh, I see what you're saying. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. yeah that'll do it. All right, so... This was, this was, this was actually a question my, uh, my party like had for me the other day, that's right, so... That's right. The Constitution save. Let's see how he does. DC 13. Ha! He fails. He fails badly and he falls. He's been thunderstruck. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll stop that. All right. Next up. <laughs> We have Varaxa. We probably can't afford much more of that I can't song. afford much more of that. Six seconds is <laughs> right. the next. All right, Varaxa. Um, Varaxa is so confused. Okay. Um, she's going to... She is going to continue to carry Pale and walk... How far can I go to like toward the stairs and up the stage? Um, I'd say you can Up go Up the stairs to the stage <laughs> I think you could get to the top of the stairs right here Next to Angus Okay, Knight. so I would go there and with carrying pail Okay And she allowed okay. you yeah. Okay Cause some, so, Now What effect is her enthrall? It's basically just a disadvantage on perception checks Because you're so focused on her Okay um, So would I have been able to walk and yeah, yeah. I mean, you're okay. not going to trip over anything. Okay. Let's oh, no, see. caltrops. No, I'm just kidding. Ah! <laughs> you're at disadvantage, so you can use one of your feet. There you go. <laughs> I have to hop. <laughs> I'm pulling a Rego. There you go. <laughs> ah. What are you okay, doing? Okay, that's not going to work. I was looking to see if I could do... Oh, that's not going to work. All right. Um, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <sighs> What is the distance on this one? Too far. Okay. Up yeah. to three. So if I cast this. Ha, ha, ha. I'm trying to do the right thing. So up to three creatures. So this is going to be. This is going to be. I'm going to cast it on. Um, Pale. And on. Elven God David Bowie. Got it. Um, they're within range. They have to make a charisma saving throw. Oh no. Charisma. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Charisma. I know. Whenever a target fails that throw, um, they make. Okay, so let's see. Okay, that's not going to be a fail. Yeah, that's okay. Got the pale. Charisma. Smith. No. Okay, oh, well. Didn't fail. That's all right. Um, no effects if it lose, right? Let me just make sure. Uh, this whole bards versus bards thing is basically just a charisma slap fight. Yeah. Okay, that's all. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Alright, so that leaves the pale. The pale looks down at you. And uh and uh now you have you know, let's see, you have her in your arms, right? You're kind of like uh -huh. holding her. Yeah. And she uh she I looks, ship it. She looks over at uh over at you and says, um there, uh, there has to be something more that you want in this life. Something that uh, presents itself as a, a way to find your satisfaction in the world. Why do you fight this? This could be part of you. This could be oh part of goodness. me. Part of the entire city. A brand new car. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stop with the psychology! <laughs> <laughs> and um, so she uh, she's gonna do it this time. She'll uh, she'll drop the uh, the other spell, and okay. she's gonna cast charm on you. Oh. All right. 
So if I could get a uh, a charisma, is it uh, wisdom? Which one is it? Wisdom saving throw. Oh DC boy, 14. oh boy. Worst choice ever. Oh no. Someone should have cast Bardic Inspiration on me, just for the record. But... Uh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, my gosh. Wow! <laughs> I told you. Uh, and that, that's, that's even without a negative one, which I already have. Oh, bad wow. oh so, I have no so, ability to re-roll things, do I? I'm making sure no. that I got nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Bad so I choice. Think, I think what we'll do... And oh, this dear. is kind of in the interest oh, no. of... This is kind of in the oh, interest no. of time, right? Yes, because it is 12.15 and I'm so tired. I think like with the pale like looks at you and the audience kind of like sees uh, sees Varax's eyes kind of like dilate a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and and they kind of like squeeze together in those those uh, serpentine slits for eyes that they're, mm -hmm. they're kind of like the vertical slits there. And we descend into into Varax's mind. Oh, good. And uh -oh. I think we... How uh, fun. I think what what happens is like the audience audience is kind of like led through this swirl of colors and like just this tunnel of of beautiful mixtures of purples and pinks and grays and 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 just just an amazing kaleidoscope of imagery until the the, the screen goes black and that's that's all we see <laughs> and for a moment we start to hear music in the background we start to hear the uh, the strumming of a bass line. Um, and then the uh, the gentle the gentle like the gentle ringing of a of a of a off slightly off tone, a tone that seems to mate up perfectly with the uh, with the um, the bass line, but it's off. But it's perfect. But it's off. But it's perfect. It's just an amazing counter song to it, a balance. And then we hear the uh, um, the soft emanations of a guitar. As as the keys are stroked with expert uh, expert uh, um, ability, and uh, and then we hear the sound of this kind of like uh, um, an echoey sound, a uh, sound of ethereal quality that kind of drifts between this world and the next and back again, um, as uh, as as it is this large apparatus is being played. We can tell we can feel the sound of the apparatus, but we don't quite see it. Everything's dark. And then we hear the uh, uh, we hear a voice uh, in the background, uh, a gentle masculine voice that comes through and, and penetrates to our hearts, and uh, and the song coalesces into the beginning, kind of like very ethereal version of uh, of the song Fame, and uh, and the credits start to roll. I'm as, gonna uh, live forever. As, uh, as a, well, not that fame, the David Bowie fame. <laughs> <laughs> but still, that's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> but, and so the credits start to roll in the background. Um, As ghosts <laughs> flit over the words. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, so the credits roll, and we, you know, we we get all of the uh, the, the character names in there, and they're wonderful performers. Um, <laughs> and then we have the little stinger clip at the very end uh, that comes back, and. So, how many years has it been, and what stage are you standing upon? And what's the Wait, stage asking, made of? Are you asking me, or, or who? No, the, whole, the whole band. Oh. Bones. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, what, what, what kind of... Because now is the opportunity, all right? You've... Uh, let's say the rock god won. But was he all that bad a guy? Or was he a bad guy? Am I on a stage performing with adoring fans? If the answer is yes, then this was a good solution. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. All right. You are I'm in happy. fact. You are in fact a, a, a before a large crowd of fans. What, what, who's in the crowd? Is it eclectic? Is it a specific population? Right, no. If if this is Varax's, you know, version of of well, this is wonder here. This is everybody's version because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but again, it, so Varaxa would be thrilled if this is high class, you know, the the richest of the rich, and they are you know um, enthralled by my performance, and um, I'm I'm in the upper echelons of society. That's where 
if that's what's going on, then Varax is thrilled. <laughs> okay. So what would be what would be the the ideal scene for a performance for Angus Ainu? Oh. <laughs> one where we're not dead <laughs> yeah. well that's one thing but but in the grandest of of what i would really want is i would want to finally achieve my my goal in life and and really that is to to share the beauty of of dissonance and so i'd want to take <coughs> I want to like literally take the pitches that everyone is hearing and like mesh them together in a sense and just send them out and send them out and send them out and uh, through my voice, obviously. And, um, and, and I want to look and see the it, it, like dissonance. It, it's, it takes what, when you actually experience dissonance, it, it it sounds disjointed at first, and it doesn't make sense, and then all of a sudden it kind of makes sense. And so I'd want to see the actual look in people's eyes as that that moment like clicks in their head right. that it's making sense. Um, so really, that that was be my ultimate goal is just that I take. The, the pitches of my, my fellow bandmates and, and, and the pitches of the world around that I'm in, the stage that I'm taking, and just mm -hmm. make that happen. Okay. Yeah, you, you're you totally digging on that. That's for sure. There's a, I think there's maybe like a little brief flashback of you actually being instructed by Vinaya Celine and talking about music from an age gone by. Um and uh, and actually, him introducing you to the writings of your great grandfathers. Oh, nice! Wow! Yeah. So, uh, Scout, how about you, Scout? What happens with you? Well, so as this guy's taken over the city, and who knows, maybe further. Um, is it a good? Just, is it a good? There's just been a lot. It's been a great peace. Sure. Nobody fights anymore. Uh, maybe Peace they've treaty. lost a little bit of their free will. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, um, as I play, um, it's a little more haunting than before. Right. Along with all the uh, ghosty stuff. And uh, the, the flame coming out of my guitar is now a blue flame. Nice. <laughs> is there a peace in Scout's soul? His warring soul? There's there's a maybe a missing piece. Yeah. Uh, interesting. <laughs> interesting double meaning. I like it. All right, and finally Rigo. So you're there playing. Uh, you're there playing your bass guitar, but you're also wearing a very nice. I was coat. gonna say he's wearing the coat, right? <laughs> that he's having. I am. I am wearing a very nice coat. You're wearing the coat. I am wearing the coat. Yeah. So how does how does this uh, how does this resolve for you? What's your uh, what's your image of a of a grand performance? Well, I've got my bass, the same one I've always had. It's uh, it's no different from what it was, but uh, I'm there, mm. still kind of in the back, but my bass resonates just that little bit more on this stage. Mm -hmm. might be the acoustics it might be something else but uh it's it's as he's uh it's as he's pulling out this uh this uh like kind of bass solo in the uh in the bridge of the song mm -hmm. he's uh he's taking an extra bit of care in the particular notes he chooses he seems to be almost like like, like this might be not necessarily just an improvisation. And it's as he's playing it that he looks into the audience and another Kenku nods back at him. Oh. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. I love that. That's very cool. So, uh... It's, uh that's he's, funny. uh... That's really good. <laughs> He he might be he might be in this uh in this you know in this dead gods band, uh, 
using his abilities, but he's uh he's uh he's sending a little bit of information back home to uh uh certain servants of the Raven Queen. Very nice. Very nice. That's actually pretty cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> so uh Rigo so, yeah. the double agent. Oh, That's man. right, yeah. So um so yeah, so coach. I think the I think the, the, the credits continue to roll. Now we have like the nice artistic drawings of everybody and their, their renderings <laughs> and their current state. And, uh, and yeah, the episode comes to a close. Um, yeah, well done, everybody. That's pretty that good. That's hilarious. That was really good. Um, that was fun. The, the balance that I struck with this is that um, you, you overcame two out of three of the, uh, of the band members. Um, and while Varaxa was charmed, um, it was, it was realized that there were certain goals in each and every one of you that wanted to see some kind of resolution toward it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and perhaps Vinayas Helene was a, a part of that, or maybe he was, I don't know, he enhanced it. He might not have, who knows, we might have to find out in a different story. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, I think like the, uh, the overarching story was was the pale wanting to bring back um a a god that had drifted away um uh, from over what was it uh twelve hundred years in the past had drifted <laughs> away from elven culture and that was the the end of the uh, the elven society that was here at sapphire harbor mm. and uh that was when the new city formed and uh so she was trying to bring back the original rock and roll that had been here. So that was kind of the ultimate goal. The heart of rock and roll is still beating. That's right. Very <laughs> Huey, very Lewis. That's right. So, uh, so hey. Well, I'm, you can uh, listen. You can come back, baby, because rock and roll never forgets. Yeah. <laughs> well, nice work, everyone. I uh, I hope this was was fun. I I feel like a trilogy was okay. I feel like it could have been a little bit longer. But um, yeah. I think we, I think you guys, you guys accomplished a lot. You guys worked through uh, some of the different skill sets that bards have, and and while you may have used some spells similarly, there was enough difference that I think you guys made it very unique to each of you, which was pretty cool. I like that a lot. But um, thanks for sticking around so late. It is super late their time, <laughs> super late my time anyway. Much less. But uh, thanks again for everybody who entertained even the thought of having an all bards uh, game. And uh, for those who uh, want to learn a little bit more about what we do at En-ROADS, uh, check the show notes down below. Um, huge thanks to, to Jeff, who played Ungasinid, uh, to Justin, who played uh, Scoud, uh, to uh, Heather, Good who job, played guys. Varaxa, and then obviously, last but not least, Alyssa, who played the wonderful King Kuriko. Rigo. Rigo. Rigo the Rigolian. Oh, dear. And, what uh, have we done? <laughs> and as always, I am your dungeon master, Jeff Romo, and I am always thankful for, uh, for the wonderful players around me. Uh, so as I am wont to say, go get your own game. Make some friends. Sit around a table. You never know what might happen. Let your imagination run wild. And uh, just follow the story. Roll the dice. See what happens. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, hope you guys come back for future episodes. We will see you all very soon.